Hi everybody, welcome to the Master Flow Plumbing YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about push connect fittings, shark bite fittings, push fit fittings, tectite fittings, or whatever you want to call them. But we're going to talk about these guys right here. Before we begin though, I'd like to ask you to go ahead and click that subscribe button right down over there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. If you don't, I think all the pipes in your house are going to start leaking. So all right, let's, uh, let's begin talking about these. Um, I guess first and foremost, why would you ever want to use one of these fittings instead of actually soldering copper pipe? Obvious answer, and this will be for all my uh, longtime fans out there that have been plumbers for 42 years and know everything. Uh, the reason why the average homeowner might want to use this is exactly the reason that maybe they just don't know how to solder copper pipe. Um, soldering copper pipe can be difficult for a lot of people in this world I mean it's easy for us professional plumbers especially those guys out there that have been doing it for 42 years uh, but the average homeowner is not gonna know how to do it are these ideal to use everywhere in your house no but they will get you through a weekend emergency if you have a line break in your house uh, things of that nature um, there are some situations even as a professional plumber why I even use them if I am like in a, a tall building or something along those lines and I'm having water just constantly draining back and I'm on a tight schedule or I've got people belly aching at me to get the water turned back on you know the type of situation like that um, and I just can't get the solder to take because of the water Water situation well you know shark bite fittings uh, push connect fittings you know are great for that scenario so with that said they're not perfect um, they actually do have some issues and uh, some things you need to be aware of um, so the biggest thing that most people actually make mistakes when they're installing this is they don't get them pushed in all the way I'm going to show you a couple well, actually I'm going to show you a trick anyways on how to get these pushed on all the way and to make sure that you do every time and it's simple as actually using a depth gauge and a uh, in a, in a marker uh, so but before we begin let's talk about these insert fittings that are on the inside of this if you look inside of there you'll see these little fittings rattling around in there and what those are and I can usually pull them out with just my bare hands um, that's what these are right here uh, I'm gonna go ahead in this particular case I'm just gonna pull them all out I actually prefer to have them out of the fitting before I actually insert anything into it on copper pipe you don't need those these are stiffeners and these stiffeners are, are made to go on the inside of PEX pipe and that's what they're actually used for and that's so that once this is on there that the edge of the, this end of this PEX pipe can't collapse personally I can't see how that would even happen anyways I mean I've got super strong hands and fingers and I can squeeze as hard as I want to on the edge of this PEX pipe right here and I can't get that to collapse at all so I don't know for some reason the manufacturer thinks that that's a good idea they call it a stiffener so that's that's what we're gonna call it too um, but yeah we're gonna go ahead and use that now there are different brands of these this particular brand is actually called Tectite there's this brand there's shark bite um, and there are several others that are actually out there also so the most common term people use is shark bite fitting and they do all kind of work the same uh, they actually have like a a device in there basically it's like a one-way type thing once it's pushed in if you look down inside of there you'll see there's an o-ring and then you'll see there's like a little metal ring with teeth a little metal ring with teeth is what actually keeps it from being able to come back off once it goes on it actually locks onto the pipe that way the o-ring is how you make the seal um, so with that said uh, they recommend that you don't usually reuse these fittings but if you do don't reuse them more than once or twice uh, as, as you know the o-ring in the inside can become damaged over time uh, the other big mistake people will make with these is they will not clean up this sharp edge on on this pipe now this particular piece of copper right here was cut with a regular tubing cutter actually this nice Milwaukee one and it leaves a ridge on the inside of the pipe which typically you know even if you're soldering this you want to try to get rid of that and then the outer edge it leaves just a little bit of a raised edge on there when you cut it it's even worse if you cut it with a sawzall or if you cut it with a hacksaw you're gonna really leave a jagged edge on there so this right here is called an in and out uh, deburring tool that does the inside and the outside of the pipe so what I always do is I always do the inside first and you're gonna just kind of put that on there and turn it around like that and it gets rid of that burr bird edge on the inside right there well this side right here of it does the outside okay and you go ahead and get that nice and cleaned up right there like that you can see what it does it takes that edge right off of it so that when we go to push this fitting on here 
we're not going to go ahead and damage that o-ring inside of it um, because if you don't do this that's exactly what's going to happen you might get lucky once or twice and have it not do any damage to that o-ring in there but if you keep doing it all the time that's what's going to happen eventually and then that's going to be uh, you know a, a potential leak for you now we actually did a short on this last week and had a couple comments on there and one gentleman actually went as far as to say that's a guaranteed leak and another one said that, that creates a service call. Um, that's not true. You know, I've actually have installed these in some situations, you know, years ago and they're still there and they're fine. Um, again, it all comes down to how you do it. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit more about why you might not want to use them or might want to use them in just a moment. but. This right here is actually a tool and it does multiple sizes so one inch three quarter half inch and then some smaller sizes over here and what this is made for is to make sure that we actually get our shark bite fitting or push connect fitting on all the way so what this does is that goes on here make a nice little mark here on the edge of the pipe okay now when i go to push this fitting on here it should actually come all the way to that edge to that black mark right there so when i put these on here i always like to kind of get them started right up to that o-ring right there and then i just kind of wiggle them back and forth a little bit and then push until it's on there and you can see it went all the way on there to that black mark that i just put on the pipe um, so therefore i know that it's on there all the way uh, th this is important because you know I i've heard a lot of people say that you know you don't need to do that you can feel when that fitting goes on there well trust me when i tell you that i've done this a thousand times and there are times where you just can't tell if that fitting went on all the way it will fool you at times so we're going to do the same thing with pex we're going to go ahead and put a uh, a mark on our pipe right here just like we did with the copper we're going to go ahead and put our insert fitting in here or our stiffener as they like to call it um, not much need to actually, you know, you don't want to have a, a rough edge on this either. Um, you could damage the o-ring also, but not much need to actually use the deburring tool for this. But as you can see, I've got my black mark there. I'm going to use that same kind of twisting motion. This time I'm using the pipe instead of the fitting on the pipe. I'm pushing the pipe into the fitting. Nope, you can see right there it goes in. I know that my black mark's right there. I know that it's on all the way. Finally, I would have liked to have had a piece of CPVC to actually demonstrate this, but I could not find one in my truck because I just don't use that stuff very much. I don't like it, so I just don't have any of it laying around. But uh, we'll talk about that in just a moment, the different kinds of pipe that you can use these fittings for. But So my last fitting here on this T fitting is just going to be another piece of copper. I'm going to make my black mark. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that my edges and outer edge are deburred. Yep, that's like fingers on the chalkboard, folks, is what that sounds like. So we're going to go ahead and actually just go ahead and get this in here. And there you go. That's actually how you use a shark bite or push connect fitting. Um, let's talk about the different kinds of pipes. So basically, copper, PEX, CPVC, they all have the same outside diameter. Regular PVC, Schedule 40 and Schedule 80 have a different outside diameter and will not work with these type of fittings. Um, there may be some other kinds out there, but I mean, as far as like plumbing stuff goes, those are your three basic kinds of water line that you're going to encounter nowadays are going to be copper, PEX, and CPVC. And uh, these, these type fittings, these push connect fittings will work with any of those. Uh, so biggest reason why I don't like to use these fittings is simply cost. I know how to solder copper pipe and I would much rather spend 75 cents or a dollar. Well, you know, in this economy nowadays, maybe they're three bucks, you know, for a copper fitting. I don't, you know, I don't pay too close attention to the bill. You know, I, uh, I, I spot check that, you know, with my business, you know, you know, periodically, uh, to determine whether I need to raise prices or not. But, um, these fittings here are terribly expensive. A T fitting like this compared to a copper fitting, these T fittings like this are, you know, I've seen them at Home Depot as high as like $13, $14 just for one fitting. Uh, as to where the copper uh, equivalent of this would probably be two, three dollars at the most. So it is significantly more money. That's why you won't really ever see a house plumbed with shark bite fittings uh, for that reason. It's just, they're just too expensive. They're not cost effective. However, they do have their place in the world despite what some of my adoring fans out there would tell you that they have no place in the plumbing world they they, they do um, especially for the average homeowner out there who 
for whatever reason decided they were going to repair a water line in their home on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon and uh, they're having a hard time they can't get the solder to take to it and uh, you know because of some water dripping or whatever reason um, these fittings actually work really good you know for that application um, do I recommend that a professional plumber use them all the time no but there's gonna be times where you're gonna need to and uh, they're a wonderful thing to have in that case um, you know what I mean so it's not always about you know doing things you know with the copper 110 percent of the time sometimes it's more about you know getting the job done getting the customer's water restored and moving on to the next service call guys like me who do you know six to ten service calls a day you know we don't have time to sit there and you know mess around all day you know with things so sometimes these things get us going get the water back on and get us moving back down the road um, that's basically in a nutshell what push connect fittings are all about uh, I, I again only recommend them when you have no other choice or if you just have no skills with soldering copper pipe whatsoever we do have a video on how to solder copper pipe we even have another video on how to solder copper pipe with water in there you guys should actually just go ahead to the channel and check you know check the rest of those out you know if you want to learn how to do some of that stuff but that's basically it folks um, you know there's not a, a whole lot more to talk about with them other than that uh, so with that said we're gonna go ahead and close out this video I want to remind you to go ahead and click that subscribe button down there in that lower right hand of the corner and uh, remember as always the hots on the left and the colds on the right and if you do that everything will be alright you folks have a great day